Hi everyone, I have been working quite hard on my embroidery journal and I have uh, quite a bit to talk to you guys about today. The first uh, big step is I have actually finished uh, laying out my whole journal. Uh, I have cut all my pages, I have uh, done quite a lot of work uh, in the layout aspect and I just wanted to kind of walk you through what I've got here. So my journal, uh, exclu excluding the front and back covers, is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pages. So the really cool thing is uh, with my video on doing the freezer paper, I've realized that uh, that was a really good catalyst for me to be able to finish with my journal. I wasn't sure how I was going to get the information that I learned in my class into my journal so that it would help explain what all of my different stitches are. So the beauty is with the printing onto the fabric, I was able to take the definitions. You can, this is one of the pages I haven't cut yet. Uh, I was able to take the explanations for each of the different pieces and the different types of stitches and actually uh, type them into my computer. I did this in PowerPoint and then I was able to print them onto fabric. So if we go through the journal, page one is my little uh, mushroom that I did in Ornway. And on the back here, you can kind of see going through, I've done my two definitions for basic couching and underside couching, and then here are my examples of each stitch. So my next page is here, and there's my layout, so diaper patterns. And I did do a second um, test of the underside couching, so that's on here, but here are my diaper patterns. And this one here is on Ornaway. And there is my letter L from Ornaway and the instruction or the, the uh, definition I gave for Ornaway. And my next layout is Italian shading. And this one I was actually able to add uh, a picture of my uh, hand drawings that I had done. So I have my, my, my definition of Italian shading my piece that I stitched and then I also was able to add in a little picture of my drawings that I did. Here's my next layout which is the vermicelli damascening and Italian coaching and my samples. And if you notice the difference here, this this fabric is um, calico that I got from Tanya Berlin and this fabric here is my sugar sack. You can see the quality of the print is quite a bit better with the calico. And I think that has to do with it being a tighter weave. So when printing on the fabric, if you want to get a very, very precise image, use a high, high, high count fabric, like very, very tightly woven like the calico. The uh, I do like the texture of the sugar sacks, but the printing print quality is so much higher with this one here. And then my last page, um, I don't have anything here, it's just blank, my last layout, but I, our, the end of our class was a independent design. So these are the two images, I printed this on the, the calico of my um, pattern, that I, the colorings that I had wanted to do, sort of uh, ideas, and then I have uh, kind of drawn out all of the different techniques. Uh, now that I have my layout complete and I know the order of all of my pages, it's time to start putting them all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start kind of in the middle and then I'm going to work to the front and then to the back. So I'm going to start with my Ornaway page and my Italian shading page and I'm going to set the other two aside. So we have to keep in mind that this is the binding side. So this side is not going to be completely sewn shut because we need to have be have availability to bind the book together and also to uh, turn it right side out. Keep in mind that this is the binding side. So I'm going to put a pin in just so I remember that this has to be the open side. And I'm just going to pin the first layer. Now I'm going to put these right sides together. And as you can see, this is going to be the open side here. On my binding side, I'm going to only sew down one inch. So I'm going to mark one inch there, and I'm going to mark one inch here. This part will, be, will remain open. 
All right, I'm at my sewing machine here now, and uh, I have pinned each corner here, and I and pinned the whole two pieces together very well so they don't slip while I'm sewing. I put on my quarter inch uh, zipper foot. If you have one of those, that's great. You, they help measure your seam allowance. If not, you can just follow the edge on your sewing machine. There's usually a marker for quarter of an inch. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my stitch length down to two, so it's a little smaller. I would like a nice tight, in, tight uh, allowance on here. And I'm going to do a double back, like a, a double back stitch at the very beginning here to my little uh, line that I drew. Starting at one of the marks that I made, I'm going to start with a back stitch and I'm going to sew around the entire page, making sure that I back stitch at each corner. Miter each corner. Press back both sides of the raw edges on the three sides of the page. I finished pressing back the raw edges on each side of the page all the way around. So now I'm going to um, put these the right way and tools for that would be uh, to push out the corners, a chopstick. Uh, you could also use a skewer if you have one handy, they're quite useful. You can use uh, one of these as well, I don't know what it's called, it's just a piece of wood with a rounded pointy end. So. We'll see how which one works the best. I'm pushing the corners just with my finger for now, and I'm just being very careful of my embroidery gold work piece on the front here, and my embroidered piece. Okay. Actually, let's try with this guy first. So what I'm going to do is, as I, when I repress it, I'll just go along the seam and where we ironed it previously, it will help you uh, establish the edge there so you can give it a nice precise, uh, you get the good edge there and when you iron that, that'll be nice and precise. So you want to be just gentle with the corners, you don't want to push it too hard. Let's try this guy. just to try to get the uh, corner as accurate as possible. I think that's good enough. I find this may be a little too pointy, and I can see that probably going through the fabric at some point, so I'm going to switch to the chopstick for the next one here. So I think I prefer the chopstick. Just going to do this again along the seam and just kind of finger press it so you get it. that's a pretty good edge on that. So, this is a good time to do some finessing with your corners. So I'm going to give this a quick press and then uh, I'm going to do the other page and I'll come back and we'll talk about the um, binding edge. So here are my two finished pages. Uh, they are lining up really nicely. I'm making sure all of my uh, loose threads are, are pulled or cut off and it's nice and tidy. I'll do another press on this again after. But uh, this is my binding edge here. My opening for both pages is right like that. So I'm got uh, more pages ready, prepped and ready to sew, so I'm going to do that for the remainder of my pages in my book. My book is ready to be assembled. I'm very excited. I have it in the order that I'm going to assemble it in, and I'll just walk you through all of the pages. All of my binding openings are on the right side, and they are ready to be stitched up. I'm really quite pleased at how this little book is turning out. Um, very exciting to uh, see uh, the actual product after spending so much time thinking and um, planning. I'm also making sure that there are no loose threads 
and uh, the pressing looks pretty good. I might go over it one more time before I start putting it together. That's the end of the book. It's I've got a good little thickness, so it will be uh, it's substantial. So when it'll be all finished, it'll be a nice uh, size. For the next video, we'll talk about the binding.